Hello aspirants, looking at current affairs for 5th October, the news items picked up from the Hindu newspaper are these eight. We'll discuss them in detail. The first one, growth has fallen but government can reverse trend, says PM. So the Prime Minister Narendra Modi now has to con critics on government's handling of the economy and he has stressed that though the first quarter of this year has seen a slip in growth rate, you can see the first quarter we saw the growth rate going down to 5.7% for this financial year 2017-18. He says this is not the first time that India's growth rate has slipped and he also indicated that the fiscal stimulus may not be given. But he's spoken of removing all the glitches, the glitches which are there in the GST regime which is also said to be one of the factors resulting in the slowdown. So he has said he is committed and he'll take all necessary steps to revive growth and resolve all glitches in GST implementation in its first three months. It has been implemented with effect from July 2017. So this is a step taken here. Then the next news item is RBI holds interest rates warns against fiscal, fiscal laxity. So the Reserve Bank of India, specifically the Monetary Policy Committee of the Reserve Bank of India has come up with its review and it has not changed the repo rate. The benchmark repo rate remains at 6%. So it has kept this key interest rate unchanged and it has said that there are concerns of upward risks to inflation. So as we know, Monetary Policy Committee, its main role now is inflation targeting. And inflation has to remain at an ideal rate of 4% with a plus minus 2% fluctuation. So CPI uh, inflation for the second half of uh, this fiscal year has been projected at 42 to 4.6%. So that is why and the inflation will increase our concerns. That is what it says. Upward risks to inflation are there. So that is why it has kept this repo rate unchanged presently. Okay. It has also warned the government that fiscal discipline relaxation. What is fiscal discipline relaxation? What even the Prime Minister spoke here that there would be no fiscal stimulus coming. So this fiscal stimulus means government putting in money. So when government, when the economy is on a slowdown, there is not enough money, people are not spending. So if government spending takes place, government puts in money, that results in economy spurring into action. Means there is money in the market, people will pick up the money like that. So government would spend on various uh, you know, purposes. So that is how fiscal stimulus is given. But then fiscal stimulus, where would the government get the money from? The government, of course, has limited resources. So it would indulge in borrowing. So if when government borrows, then it has a burden on it. So that affects the fiscal discipline. Fiscal deficit is the idea that what is the government borrowing. So fiscal deficit would be affected. That means fiscal discipline would be relaxed. So government has been warned by RBI that if, if fiscal discipline is relaxed, then it may spur growth, you know, uh, temporarily, but it will have adverse impact and also add to inflationary pressure because inflation is more money in the economy. So this is the concern of RBI's monetary policy committee. So that has been highlighted here. It also talks of headline inflation that it has rose by two percentage points since the August policy review. So here, as you can see, what is headline inflation also we'll discuss. This is regarding the Monetary Policy Committee which has been formed last year and now the government has also a role in our deciding the repo rate. Earlier it was the sole domain of RBI. So RBI has three members and government also appoints three members. So these are the three RBI members in the panel. The RBI governor is the de facto chairman. So decision is taken by majority vote. So three members from government, three members from uh, RBI. So that's how it works and its target purpose is inflation targeting. So the interest rate should be set in such a way that inflation remains within this range, within this band. So that's it. Then repo rate, that is the key interest rate which RBI sets. What is this repo rate is explained here. Rate at which RBI lends, bank, lends money to banks for short periods. So RBI's lending rate is called repo rate. So banks are getting money at this interest rate from RBI. So then they would set their interest rates accordingly. So repo rate determines the further interest rates in the economy too. So that's why it is called key repo rate. Key, key interest rate. 
so when will rbi increase the repo rate and when it would reduce the repo rate it wants if it wants that banks for banks it becomes difficult to borrow then it will increase the repo rate means it, and if it wants banks to easily have borrowings undertaken then it will reduce the repo rate so if it reduces the repo rate banks will easily borrow from rbi and they will have more money they lend more money more money will come in the economy so reduction in repo rate has that effect then what is inflation that's what the monetary policy committee is doing inflation targeting so inflation is general rise in level of prices a general level of prices of goods and services rise in a country over a period of time so that is called inflation as you should understand by now we have discussed this quite often headline inflation the term means total inflation in the economy which makes headlines so there are some commodities specifically food and energy which have spikes I mean sometimes food becomes very expensive sometimes it's very cheap energy oil in the international market sees fluctuations drastic fluctuations so such drastic fluctuations if the price rise is taken into consideration because overall if you are looking at the price rise then these commodities will also be there and that the overall total inflation if you look at it then it will be very high so that is called headline inflation another term is core inflation in which such such commodities like food and energy which have sudden in spikes in their prices they are excluded so that gives you the idea of core inflation so you can see core inflation is considered more valuable because it gives you excluding the volatile substances like energy and food from calculating inflation so that gives you a better idea of general level of prices of goods and services in the economy then next news item is Ganga Mission plans turtle sanctuary in Allahabad. So the National Mission for Clean Ganga has now plans to establish a turtle sanctuary in Allahabad. So this is part of efforts to protect the rich biodiversity of River Ganga. So River Ganga has various species of turtles. It has also threatened gharial species, dolphins, as such too. So all these need to be protected. So there are more than 2,000 such aquatic species which will be protected. So this is a step taken in this direction. Already such a step had been taken. A plan was made of having such a sanctuary in Varanasi in 1989 under the Ganga Action Plan gap of that time. But then it could not be put into effect because UP government and even Union Environment Ministry uh, presently are considering denotifying it because the uh, because it will undertake construction activities along the banks of River Ganga. This is there. Then next is coal fired projections. On the, this is on the draft energy policy. So, you should know about Niti Aayog's draft national energy policy, which was unveiled in July 2017, June or July. So, this is the key points of it are being discussed here. You can see it predicts that from now till 2040, there will be a quantum leap in the uptake of renewable energy. So, renewable energy consumption would increase its capacity would increase contribution in the overall energy contribution in the economy would also increase but this will not well, of course there will be drastic reduction in fossil fuels too but still it emphasizes that we cannot reduce our dependence on coal it says that coal will fuel 67 percent of india's power generation by 2022 so for renewable energy we want to achieve 775 gigawatts through of renewable energy by 2022 it still looks at coal as a major contributor for power generation in india because we want to achieve 100 percent electrification too so even per capita and electricity consumption is also proposed to be increased so coal is seen as a major factor here by the draft national energy policy of niti so this has been inviting criticism as such because it has seen in the past three years there has been slow industrial growth coal producers have been faced with reduced demand for their power so that is why even the plant load capacity of these coal fired power plants both in public and private sector have reduced as we have discussed this earlier too it is at nearly 60 percent and that's what it wants it wants to increase this but then the coal companies these power generators are already suffering because they have high levels of bank loan defaults they are undergoing insolvency proceedings legal proceedings so then how would whole sector be revived without government assistance then second is regarding oil the draft national energy policy speaks regarding oil consumption by india also growing to 63 percent it means presently it's around 
uh, you can see it has grown to 63%. So presently, oil consumption as such of India is, oil import dependence of India is 33%. But it says by 2040, our import dependence will increase to 55%. So it does not say anything how steps should be taken to curtail such independence apart from emphasizing on promoting use of public transportation and railways. This is also criticized. Electric transport has to be endorsed, but then steps in that direction are also not emphasized on in the DNA. So this is that. Also, India's energy security through oil also has to be safeguarded and that's why we are having strategic storage of oil being taken in. So, when oil prices were low, we have also built up our stores, stored reserves as such, so that we are protected from international oil price fluctuations. But then, the still dependence on oil would continue is that the point is being criticized. Then, regarding renewables, as I said, it has not given some emphasis to change, drastic technology has been undertaken for renewables like there's a need to examine uh, having a paradigm shift in the energy consumption in the country by emphasizing on uh, storage of and the oil also storage of electricity as such and even electric vehicles so that new technologies in renewable energy are also endorsed smart grids should be you know, looked into smart houses, battery storage, concentrated solar heat and power. These are new technologies. Many revolutions have taken place in renewable energy. But India, it is saying, is missing this opportunity. We can have an opportunity in even manufacturing of equipment in this direction. But then the government's policy is not, not inclined towards renewables, but towards coal, coal being an important factor in energy consumption in the country. So that is the key point. Then next is center to dispose of excess crude dal stock. So it has been two years from October 2015 when crude dal prices were selling at skyrocketing rocketing prices like on 200 rupees per kg. But now the prices have come down to rupees 50 a kg. But then in 2016 government for the first time decided to create a buffer stock of pulses. Dals. So, this initiative had been taken to ensure that there are better prices for farmers and also to have a stock so that the local supply can be augmented, can be you know, added up to when prices rise. But now government is struggling to dispose of a buffer stock of 18 lakh tons. So, this has accumulated over the year and since it's a year has passed, much of the stock has to be removed now. So now the Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution Ministry has found out, has decided on three ways to reduce this buffer stock and steps are would be taken. But some of it would be given to states at subsidized rates, specific states like Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. Then second step is that it will be used for welfare schemes such as midday meal scheme and third it will be sent out to defense messes and jails. So, this how a buffer stock was created and now it is become a burden on the government. So, at subsidized rates, you have to remove this stock. Otherwise, the pulses would spoil. So, this is regarding agricultural status and this is drastic fluctuations in prices of agricultural produce we see in the country. Then, the next news item is Japan signals intent on Silk Road. So, Japan has signaled that it would has an intention of taking advantage of China's Belt and Road Initiative as it is called. Earlier it was called OBOR, One Belt, One Road Initiative. But then since there were concerns on the name with One Belt means bringing in China as the forefront and in, you know integrating all into one. So it has renamed it in the initiative. It's now called Belt and Road Initiative, BRI, not OBOR. Anymore. So, this BRI initiative of China is being endorsed by Japan too. Now, Japan's logistics company Nippon Express has signed a deal in August with Kazakhstan. So, Kazakhstan State Railway Company will be working with this logistic giant so that goods can be transported from China's east coast to Europe through Central Asia. So, China has built this uh, steel silk road as it's called as it is called the railway route. So, this is the transcontinental rail route which China has built which reaches up to Europe and Africa. So, Belt and Road Initiative has this as a key component. 
So this steel silk road is being endorsed now. Japan would be assisting in bringing in new trade and investment opportunities through this BRI zone. So even Japan, Japanese Chamber of Commerce and Industry has set up a liaison office in China too because initiatives would increase now with BRI being put into effect. So this is the system. Tokyo says that it has so far desisted from participating in BRI, but now it is showing an interest. So it's a zero sum game. Means you gain, I lose is not the idea. Both can also gain, both can all gain as such. So that's the idea with which Japan is going ahead now. And also another thing is in AIIB, which is Chinese initiative, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, China. Japan has no, so far not been a member. It has not participated in this. US and Japan are two important nations which are not members in Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. We'll see more about this below too. So here, and Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank is the key source through which infrastructure investment would also come forth for Belt and Road Initiative projects. So here, this is the Belt and Road Initiative, formerly called OBOR. You can see it has the land route as well as the silk route, the Silk Road Economic Belt and Maritime Silk Road Initiative. Of course, you know that India has uh, has raised objections to this Obor Initiative and uh, to Belt and Road Initiative and has refused to be a part of it. It has uh, it did not attend a conference on this too in Japan in China recently. Then this is regarding AIIB, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. It was an idea put forth by China in 2013. Then countries came forward. The memorandum of understanding was signed and AIIB was established in October 2014. After it came into effect after 10 countries, which represent 50% of the shares here, became ratified the agreement. So this is there. You can see the members, they are not just from Asia. As the name says, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, but members are from all across the globe, even European countries are members. So this shows Asian Development Bank. So Asian Development Bank members have also become members of AIIB and there are some members of ADB, but not members of AIIB. Japan being here, you can see, even USA, Japan, as I said, are the two important nations, not members of AIIB. And there are these other prospective founding members too, as you can see which are not members of ADB, but have become members of AIIB. So this is there with an authorized capital of $100 billion. It came into effect. These are the regional members, Asian members, and non-regional members to AIIB. And major contributors, of course, are in regional members, China. India comes second, then comes Russia. And in non-regional members, Germany is the key contributor. The next is... GST network braces for biggest challenge. So the GST network is now bracing itself for big challenges because the filing of GSTR1 returns by traders for the month of July, the first month of implementation of GST will end on October 10. And the GS, this uh, head of the five member panel, which has been constituted to resolve technology glitches in GST and Mr. Sushil Kumar Modi has clearly stated that this deadline will no longer be extended it has been extended multiple times three to four times but now it would not be extended in so after gstr1 gstr2 deadline would also come forth but gstr1 is completely detailed but come most of gstr2 is also auto populated means it will be automatically filled up and has to be further updated and finally submitted so gstr1 is outward and sales so this brings in all the details about sales and gstr2 two tops of purchase so then after that, there will be matching of invoices of GSTR1 and GSTR2, which GSTN has to pick, uh, pick up. So this is a big challenge before GSTN, which has been stated. You can see GSTR2 deadline is October 31. And for GSTR3, the third form, which is a comprehensive form, which for that, the deadline is November 10. This is for the first month of July. So monthly GSTR returns have to come forth and for the month of July, the deadlines have been extended drastically so that the glitches which were there, technological glitches, that can also be resolved and the traders for the first time, they would get time to fill up their GST returns. This system has been developed by Infosys and the, Mr. Sushil Kumar Modi says that it has claimed it is robust and is capable of handling large number of returns at a time too. 
Also, another aspect is regarding state tax administration being coordinated with GSTN. So, in that also, Infosys is helping states. There are Model 1 states like Karnataka, which have developed their own backend. But many of the states, around 27 states, are part of Model 2 states. So, they have problem in creating the backend on their own. So, Infosys is also helping them in that is also been highlighted. Then next is the last news item, 2017 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for three for capturing life in atomic detail. So the three scientists here you can see, Jacques Dubochet, Zhao Chim Frank and Richard Henderson, they won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for 2017. UPSC has never asked the names of Nobel Prize winners, but yes, for what purpose the Nobel Prize has been awarded, that is important and you should be un having a clear understanding of that. So the names may not be important, but in which area it was given. Also, UPSC will not directly ask that, but he ask a question on that. So there can be a question on Cairo electron microscopy as such, without any reference to Nobel Prize also. So that can be expected. So what is this cryo electron microscopy? You should first understand what is cryogenics. So cryogenics means at very low temperatures. So this is an electron microscope where the researchers freeze biomolecules mid-movement as such and they visualize the processes. So that it means this freezing takes place very fast. There's this method called vitrification method which allows so. So the natural shape as such of the biomolecules is preserved and even 3D models are created. So clear understanding of life's chemistry can be had and also this helps in development of pharmaceuticals medicines. So this the cryo-electron microscopy, this is shown here, you can see the electron gun, the electron beam then results in the specimen getting detailed out image. So this specimen you can see by vitrification method, it is, it is kept in a particular position so that its clear image can be understood here, its further details are provided. You can see here, the electron microscope resolution has also changed drastically. You can see in 2013, this was the resolution. Now it has become much more detailed. So even Zika viruses 3D models have been developed. So this has helped scientists search for potential targets for pharmaceuticals. Too. So these are the three scientists who have been awarded the Nobel Prize. So these are the news items. Thank you.